Okay, so it's 7 o'clock EST. I'm Chris on the East Coast. My buddy Ken coming in from Colorado, and it's time for another episode of Shop Talk. Here we are. Here we go. Here we go. So it's been a yeah. hell of a week and a hell of a winter, and i got to start off with that, that I'm tired, man. I can't wait for Daytona for some time off. But I heard that you could actually ride today out in your, your way. Is you that could. true? You think you could have gotten out on the bike today? You could if you had a motorcycle that was running, which I have like... Oh! Dude, I have a garage full of non-running shit, and it's killing me. <laughs> That's tough. It's Is it because me. you just keep going from one thing to the next and are like, oh, I'll fix no. that, and then you break one, and then you go to the next thing, and then you go, you break that <sighs> one, and then you go, oh, I'll fix that, and then you... You go to the next is that what's no going on? it's be, it's because i have too many things on well, my plate at one time and I, I think he actually believes that there's like 56 hours in a day so in his head <sighs> he can really accomplish everything he sets out to well, by the way how come i don't get an introduction hey you got a microphone so that hey lo- i didn't want it that lovely sultry <laughs> sexy voice that you hear far off in the distance is the beautiful heather callan <laughs> Joining us to provide feedback and notifications from the world of Facebook Live. Woohoo. How was that? See, that shit came right off the cuff. Yeah, nice work. <sighs> um, I'm an understudy to Pat Jansen. I just want to say that. Mad props out to Pat. He's teaching me to speak in front of people. He talks well, he does things with his mouth hole. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> mm. So, Washington, D.C. Last show of the seven city tour of the IMS series. And man, I got to tell you, like going into that, I'm sitting there thinking, Jesus Christ, who would want to have a motorcycle show in the middle of Washington, D.C.? And I mean, it was right in the middle of town. Like it was there was there was no doubt of where we were. We were in the middle of D.C. proper and it was a total pain in the ass getting in and out and anywhere around. But once you settled into it, dude. D.C., at least parts of it, the non-most violent city in the world parts, is, is absolutely a beautiful city. It was so awesome to be there. And for Heather and I both, this was our first time in the nation's capital, like in the city proper. So it was a good time. And, I mean, you know, really great show, really a lot of sentiment. You know, everybody came together and, like, just finished out the year great for IMS. And I was really glad to be part of that this year. That is, uh, you know, you never know with that with that venue, you know, and where it was. D.C. Sometimes it's like hit or miss. It's like um, Atlantic City. Right. You just don't know like what you're going to get. Um, but sometimes you, you can get surprised because people get. I, I think this time of year specifically, they want to talk motorcycles. You know, they want to talk. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's. I'm sure you saw some of the the hubbub about Mama Tribe this weekend. Um, Seem to be a wh- whole lot of people there. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start charging people twenty dollars every time they say the name. I'm gonna try though. And my best Tyler Porter from Metzler gets the comment of the effing week. He put up a picture of Jules from uh, from uh, Pulp Fiction, and it said, "Go ahead, say Mama Tried one more time." Where he's pointing the gun in that part of the movie, <laughs> dude, and I love it. Listen, let's let's talk about that for a second. That's Social funny. media, you guys are wearing this shit out. And I mean, I know, listen, I use it for stuff that I do too. And I put up pictures of cool shit that I'm doing and I think other people might want to see. But man, it's just too friggin' much sometimes. It's too much. It's too much. Like sometimes I I just turn my shit off. You must have seen George the Painter's comment. No, no, no. Oh, get the fuck out of here. No, tell me. Because George is the best. Hold on. Give me me a second. You and Heather talk for a second. I think I got... And I'll find it. It says... Is there any bikes at Mama Tried, or is it just a bunch of, can I say that word? Yes. Mooks taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, did that get people riled up. Did it? 91 comments. Oh my God. How many comments? 91 comments. Yes. <laughs> And you know what, man? I got to listen. I say the same thing over and over again, and I'm going to say it here now. You are not as cool as the motorcycle. The shit that makes these shows and these events cool is the motorcycle. People stand in line to get into these things to see cool motorcycles, to see pieces of history and pieces of innovation. They're not there to see you and your selfie. I don't 
give a rat's ass what it is you're having for breakfast at the Iron Horse Hotel down the street from goddamn Mama Tried Show. Well, wait a minute. No, I kind of do. Sometimes those Bloody Mary pictures are more interesting than the selfies. I'd rather see the Bloody Mary than the freaking selfie. I'm sorry. We've seen them 15 times. But it's always someone holding the Bloody Mary like this. Like, this is me and my Bloody Mary. No, no, no. (laughs) I said I just want to see the Bloody Mary. Not. I don't care about the person. The Bloody Mary. (laughs) You know... I mean, all coming from people who were, who were not there this year. So true. obviously we're just bitter, jaded. I'm not bitter uh, and jaded. Photo journalist angles. I'm not. I'm not bitter and jaded. I'm just saying, like, man, take take a break, take a break. And I, and the worst thing is, is like, you know, we talk all the time about how the danger of motorcycle events is is homogenization. You know what I mean? And like, I believe today in the world of social media, we have accelerated homogenization beyond beyond our control. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. as soon as here, – here's a perfect example. Hooligan races came out. It was cool. It was neat. Now every ship event that has more than 10 people at it is having a f- fucking hooligan race. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hey, I get it. It's cool. You know, I, I see that it, it, it. you have to agree that it even influenced what they're doing with American Flat Track, which was awesome because it rejuvenated that whole age-old sport. Oh, yeah. And it's killer. Mm-hmm. But – you know, do something else. Somebody comes up with something cool, let them do it. It doesn't mean that it has to be at every single stop, every single motorcycle show, in every single picture. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's people... But that's what we do as a society. Uh, we wear shit out, right? And it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I mean, <laughs> I, I come from a generation of punk rock music that, like, as soon as, as soon as more than a dozen people thought a song was cool or a band was cool, we ditched the shit and went and listened to something else that nobody was listening to. Sure. You know? Yep. Uh, but yes, I'm, a, I'm a bitter old man, and that's the, that's the truth. So. Look, look at that gray well, somebody, coming in, boy. <laughs> who shall remain nameless said, hey, are you at Mama Tried? And I said, no, I'm not nearly cool or young enough to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! So, uh, yeah. Now, now they're doing the same thing with Flat Out Friday. They're doing it everywhere now. <laughs> Flat Out Friday was one of the coolest things that went on at Mama Tried next to the ice race, and that Mother Nature keeps whooping their ass over the ice racing part. And I feel mm-hmm. so bad for them about that. But Flat Out Friday was so cool, and now it's become a mobile show. They're taking it everywhere. It's going to be Flat Out Friday here, Flat Out Friday there, at that, at, at in this city, in that city, in this venue, and it's like. That wow. just trying to make a buck. That's all right. <sighs> Man, you know, and the, the so, words of Jay Allen come pounding through my head that like sometimes you got to remember in your pursuit of making a dollar, you're responsible for making memories for people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, what what are we doing? How are we leaving this shit? Yeah, I mean, yes. Yes, I think to some extent. And also people have the choice of whether they're going to consume that media or not. And you know, if they don't like it, they can not look at it, right? It's like the TV. You don't like what's on it? Change so, the channel. So, hey, man. Or, just, hey, just create a new social media platform because oh, it seems that, like Vero. there's another one. Vero. 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 Can anybody yep. tell me what is Vero? My mother's watching, so I wasn't going to go there. Okay, so I can tell you what I learned real quick because we're slaves to social media today. So as soon as I saw 152 people's posts come up today that your buddy such and such is on Vero – I had to go check it out. And from what I can see, it seems like a super cumbersome, even more complicated system of social media. Like you can control, lucky you, you can control who gets to see your posts and how limited you keep it or how wide open you keep it. And it's like, that's what I want to do. Well, you you can do that with Facebook, too. You can do friends or friends of friends or private. I guess guess this this is a thing where it's like close friends, very close friends. I slept with these people (laughs) once, you know, like. (laughs) I officially think I'm old. (laughs) I really do. Hey, man, I'm glad to be here. I'm just going to start calling people again and see what happens. (laughs) They won't answer. They won't answer. Have you seen every time we have an interview here and we call, call people on the phone? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so Magoo's checking in, and he says he was flat tra- track racing in the 70s and 80s when nobody gave a crap about it. That's right. And, That's uh, right. Let's see. Missy Shoemaker's here. Hey, Missy. My mother says I'm supposed to reach over and smack the crap out of you. We're swearing a lot, and Heather's mother is. Um, hey, my cousin Eric's here. Hey, Eric. That's a nice surprise to see you. Um, wow. blah, blah, blah. Clinton. I know we got two our our two ugly mugs on the screen, and we can't figure out how to get Heather up there. <laughs> no, he asked me. I said no. 
Right? No bueno, hard pass. Which, you know, um, on, I've been married for three years now. I'm used to hearing it. Uh, Clinton Wallace, he said this is perfect. He loves that he's driving home from work and gets to listen. Nice, nice. And Clinton Jeff- is currently building the longest ass chopper in the world. For and Michael I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. He put a picture up the other day of his Springer standing next to it. It's like eight feet tall. It's three feet taller than he is, man. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, son of a bitch, there's already like me and Jeff Cochran and Bill Dodge and a bunch of us were standing around in Texas when we were at the, uh, the, um, the, um, in motion show, (laughs) in motion show at Lone Star. What was the name of your show? (laughs) And we were all talking about how, you know, Clinton has inspired all of us to go build long choppers again. And here he goes building something even longer than the last pan head that he built. It's a treacherous, treacherous, smiling Texas bastard. So, did speaking of long choppers, did you happen to catch uh, Yaffe's social media feed about that Triumph? I didn't see his feed, dude. Uh, well, you went to his shop, right? And you saw that Triumph yeah, in the front yeah. room had those crazy ass, like eight foot tie long. I did the, see that yeah. real quick. The, I think. Yeah, the sissy bar was like you know eight feet tall or whatever. He just took his portable bandsaw and just cut that shit right off. <laughs> That's and chopper, this, baby. And the the front end on it was just some pieced together wrong, you know, frames like this, you know. So he <laughs> he put a sugar bear front end on it, and he's changing it, changing a bunch of things, making it his own for sure. So that'll be uh, upcoming in the pages of Cycle Source. Nice, soon. nice. So hey, um, reminding all you guys out in Facebook and and wherever you're listening, tuning into Cycle Source and the Weekly Report with Chris and Ken. Shop Talk is uh, live and active on Facebook, and we're watching for your comments. So if you have anything you'd like us to talk about, you'd like to engage us with, um, go ahead and throw it up there, and Heather will do her best to get it out to us, and we'll try to answer it. Great show coming up today. Tons of stuff in the news. Later on in the second um, part of the show, we have the fortune to have Gard Hollinger on today, the co-founder of Arch Motorcycles, um, Gard and Hol- um, Gard and Hollinger. <laughs> Guard and Keanu Reeves have uh, been putting together some really, really fantastic motorcycles. We're going to catch up with them today. Um, Harley Davidson in the news, tons of Daytona stuff. It's uh, it's shaping up to be a great season, man. It's all getting started here in less than a minute. So well, real nice. quick, let me give two more shout outs real quick because Jay Allen is actually tuning oh, in, so right I'm super on. super happy about that. Um, it still surprises me when people like him check us out. So while Jay Allen, while we're mentioning Jay Allen real quick, um, Jay Allen is back for the uh, MC position at the Broken Spoke again this year, and the activities for Broken Spoke's year kick off in Daytona. They're going to have Uncle Cracker. They're going to have um, the Hairball Band. There's the Rat Rod Invasion. On Wednesday, we're actually doing our bike show there. So a lot of great stuff going to be happening at the Spoke. I know for a lot of us, the Spoke is really that sanctuary where you can run away from Daytona for a minute and just kick back. So really happy to announce that we're going to be back at the Spoke. Okay, I have to say, I'm really impressed. I didn't know half of what you just spewed right. out. So that's amazing. <laughs> he did his homework. Listen, this, Holy crap. This, this weekly news program has put the fucking pressure on, man. I'm, Dude, I'm your actually, mouth. I'm studying stuff now, you know? That's funny. So, um, we don't, and I think we're trying to keep a low profile in in uh, Daytona this year. It's not going to be crazy, crazy, right? Yeah, no. No major, major activations, right? That's the idea, Chris. Yeah. Well, no, Please keep saying that every time you talk to him. Remind him of that because every time we're doing wi- we're doing Willies. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing your doing, show. We're doing a lot of you support guys will be out at Sons of Speed and Boogie yeah. East TT race. Boogie East on Friday. Boogie East on Friday. And um, we're going to be hanging out for a little bit at Dodge's shop, doing some garage stuff, like just, you know, guys in a garage doing some cool shit. But it's nothing nice. like nothing like the schedule we've been keeping, man. I mean, I'm looking for – I'm finally looking for that one week of just celebrating motorcycles. and. and we may have out. to steal a motorcycle to ride, though, because like Chris <laughs> said earlier, we don't currently have <laughs> – we've got like six motorcycles upstairs and – most of them are in pieces, so if somebody's bike goes missing, hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to be riding like six different motorcycles while I'm there. I've got That's them. awesome. That's I got awesome. them lined up. I got three Harleys <laughs> and three Indians lined up, so it is going to be a busy, busy week. I right don't on. even think I told you. I'm going to, I believe I'm going to be riding the new 48 Special and the 1200 mm. Iron. Right nice. on. Down there as well. Yeah, so, we have, we actually, those, so. 
We can we can start into the news about that a little bit because uh, we have some imagery in the press release that came out from Harley Davidson on their new motorcycles. So let's take a break from our rhetoric and switch over to the news. Um, yeah. Harley Davidson releases two new sports. There's 48 special and 1200 um, sports refused throwback design with modern performance. Mm -hmm. um, great, great looking motorcycles. I'll throw a picture up here real quick. Obviously, the uh, 48 special on the left, the iron on the right. Here's another mm -hmm. great shot of the 48. It's a cool little bike, man. It's, a, it's like already tricked out. Not so, much you really yeah. need to do to it, but ride the hell out of it. And I wonder where they get that, um, where they get the ideas for that. You know, I wonder if it's really because they're finding that people want to have something that looks custom that they don't have to actually do anything to. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, do you think that's what's happening with um, kind of the people that are out there that they're looking for more of a more of a bike that's already tricked out and looks a little more custom? Um, and they don't have to do as much, and they can kind of ride off the showroom floor and feel like they're riding something custom? You know, I'm still trying to get my head around a lot of what the uh, the millennial mentality is. And mm -hmm. I would wonder if that goes along with their, you know, their sentiments of not actually wanting to own anything is less complicated and, you know, still on a participation level. But I would bet that that has something to do with it. And, you know, if you follow the natural evolution of a motorcycle rider, ultimately – it's just human instinct again to to get your hands in and piss with something once you have it so yeah but it's it's great i mean if they're doing stuff like this and it's drawing people in that's good for everybody yeah and what do you you know i think we're going to end up um my i hope is that we're going to end up riding the high bar version of the 48 special it's interesting you know ever since um and i know that they probably weren't the ones that that you know started it but we had uh, when we did, when we when I was at Sucker Punch, that's what we gave the journalists the option. We were like, "Hey, we've got a low bar version of our bobber, and we've got a high bar version. What do you want to ride?" Yeah. And some guys were definitely more inclined to ride one or the other. But I mean, I think that our audience is probably more interested in that high bar version than they are kind of the cafe racer. Yeah, version. I think so. And you know what? You know what's really funny? You said, "Where does some of this stuff come from?" Like when I look at this picture of the forty eight, it screams Nash motorcycles to me. Oh, yeah. Nash mm -hmm. had a bike called the Looky Looky that I used to love to ride. And mm -hmm. it was, I mean, the basic design concept of this bike reminds me of that so much, other than the fact that it was a hardtail and, you know, had some of their their goofy gimp hanger bars on it, which made it cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, I definitely. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks like a cool bike. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to ride it and see what happens. Yes, so. sir. Yes, sir. So. Lots of good stuff going on with Harley Davidson. Um, you know, obviously this year spells a uh, big party with them. 115 year celebration in Milwaukee. You know, the ride home that they they talk about all the time. Plenty of activities going on. Um, one of them that I think is a really good idea is beach <laughs> racing. They're no, actually, yeah, yeah. Beach that's, racing can beach racing. It's weird, right? Yeah. Mm. It's a great idea. Shocking. It's a great yeah, idea. I wonder where they got that. Wonder so, where they got it. <laughs> real quick, the only thing I will say, I just peruse this real quick, uh -huh. and I think it's great that, yes, it's Harley Davidson, but they didn't jump on the bandwagon of like doing all these great bands. They're really focusing on the motorcycles they this year are. for their events, and I have to give them they a lot are. of credit because, you know, I think for their 110th, it was a lot of music and yeah. stages here and stages there, and this is truly yeah. about motorcycling. So and, you know that makes sense with the uh, with the mission statement that was led through the AIM Expo, both from Harley and from Indian. You know that it's it's time to remember that this is about people and. You know, and, and the experiences that go on and what we were just talking about with making memories. Harley's really reaching out to that with their 115th with, you know, they got the Wall of Death. They got Beach Racing, Flat Out Friday. They got a Run What You Brung, um, Drag Races, um, obviously the museum, factory tours, everything that goes on with that. Even uh, Civilian Skills Competition and Police Skills Demo, which is something I would love to see more of at all motorcycle shows because that's... You know, it's just a wild, crazy shit to watch. It's it's fantastic. So, sure. Where did you see the beach racing thing? Because I don't see that anywhere. Here, right here, Harley Davidson beach racing Friday and Saturday. First time in over a hundred years. Watch bikes tear through the sand on the shoreline of Lake Michigan, free and open to the public with beach activities. Lake 
Lake Michigan. That's what it says. What the hell is Lake Michigan is not Let's in see. Learn more. Daytona. No, 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 no. This is for their 105th. Like, no, no. This oh, is, yeah, oh, this is, yeah. Yeah, we moved on. We moved on to the 105th. I'm I sorry. Thought we were, I thought we were talking <laughs> Daytona. I'm like, they're doing it's racing in Daytona. Shelly no. was talking about that years ago, but they would never open up the beach. No. That would be awesome, right? No, but we can talk so, about what Harley has going on in Daytona because it's an awful lot, too. Um, you know, obviously, um, everybody's talking about the race, and the, the Daytona races are going to be sick. They're out at the Speedway. Um they actually have some skill stuff going on there, it looks like. Ill and conduct. Yeah, he's yeah, right. Be... Ill conduct, kicking it. Glad um, he's going to be on a closed course, not with a bunch of other people. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Come on, I had to throw it in there. Nice, <laughs> nice, crashed nice. crashed right in front of me. Um, so let's talk, let's talk for a second about some batshit crazy news because – did you see the Indian demo tour truck? Yes. yes. Wow. I don't know if you're supposed to laugh at that. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean. Um, it's not, you know, it's funny because I actually reached out to them today to find out like, hey, we're still on schedule, not knowing that whole thing happened. Yeah. Hey, we're still on schedule for Daytona. These are the bikes. This is when I'm picking them up, blah, blah, blah. Right. And they said, yeah, we're good. I was oh. like, all right. Good. Hey, you know what? You can't, you can't, you can't doubt Indian because they definitely have had their shit together these last two years. I'll tell you, sure. I'll tell you who you do have to give mad credit to when you're looking at this picture: the driver of the rig. Because yes, the trailer's on fire. Yes, the demo fleet is burning to the ground. Look how far ahead the tractor is. So yeah. immediately he yeah. had the foresight to say, okay, let me get these several hundred gallons of diesel fuel away yeah, from away. the rest of the shit that's <laughs> on fire, you know? Sure. And it would have obviously have been a much more expensive endeavor if the truck would have burnt down with the rest of it. But Yeah, for sure. Far well, out. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll all work out. That's what insurance, insurance is for. So. And most importantly, nobody got hurt. Right. There that's, you right. Go. that's right. That's right. That's right. She's such an optimist. Um, I know. Jiminy Cricket. One of our favorite things coming up in Daytona, obviously, is the uh, Willie's Tropical Chopper time that we were talking about. That's going to be going on Thursday, like it does all the time. Have you uh, won a trophy at Willie's? You know, I I did. I got a couple different trophies, like Rogue's pick, and I think I got Roadside's pick one time, but I've never got an actual Tropical Chopper time trophy engraved trophy which would be so badass so real quick we are um we've kind of jumped on last minute to help willie and the folks at tropical tattoo put this together and if anybody out there in facebook instagram social media twitter whatever land wants to step up and sponsor um we can uh get your name out there we're just looking for prizes you don't have to really give us any cash or anything that's not what we're we're in it for we just want to be able to give some cool stuff out on your behalf so uh hit me up we actually um just the other day got some um some fxr shocks from the people at fox racing we're going to be giving away for uh for a prize in the fxr class which is you know surprising and also very telling about the things that are going on in our industry you're seeing companies like race tech suspension uh technologies um fox racing pro action are coming in and you know readdressing the whole this whole part of the industry as far as performance suspension so it's it's neat to see as you know generation x and y who had their feet in both sides of the water and now the millennials that are coming up behind us you know real world performance becomes more important to us as a culture you know and these companies are coming in with, you know, some great product behind it. So, um, yeah, and I agree with you on that. I think that once I think we're going to see more and more of that as time goes on. You know, I think we're going to see more and more of kind of mainstream uh, motorcycle going more towards V twin, and I also think we're going to see some of the V twin stuff start to go to the other side. Um, as well, you know, start embracing some of those other products that aren't necessarily V twin related, um, and I think it's going to be good for the industry overall. And and absolutely, and I think you know, with uh, the release of the soft tail line, I think we saw a lot of that too, because I think a lot of the design um, concepts that came out in the soft tail line were, you know, very very unlike what Harley riders are 
are, you know, are expecting from Harley Davidson. And I think those design influences are coming from, you know, other manufacturers in motorcycling and even out of motorcycling. So, yeah. So also in Daytona on Friday is the Boogie East Chopper Show. Um, super, super laid back time that we had last year, the first time these guys did it. Um, the guys at Chemical Candy brought out this show, and it's just a, you know, an old bike show. I, th I forget what the cutoff is, 1980 or 80. 84 Four. maybe. Um, 84 and older, and, you know, it's just they put up a band. It's behind Annie Oakley's bunch of cool bikes you know maybe three or four vendors and it was just an afternoon of digging on cool motorcycles and hanging out with people so nice glad to That's be great. part of that again so yeah and by by the way on that same uh vein um i just saw that um billy posted up that sons of speed you can buy tickets online right now at eventbrite yes if you put sons of speed, if you put a sons of speed up um you can go there and buy tickets so you don't have to mess with it at gate or anything so Anyway, I just thought I'd pass that along. I'm yeah, sure and they're they're a, they're actually doing uh, they're actually doing VIP passes and all kind of stuff. So that that thing yep. is is advancing itself nicely. Um, it sounds like from inside reports that you know Billy is much more prepared for it this year, less hurried. Like you know they're they're ready and they're waiting for the race. You know for the race to kick off for the people to get to town. So looks like it's going to be a solid time. So I want to. Yeah. Can I back up real quick about Daytona? I know you mentioned it in passing that we're doing our bike show at the Broken Spoke. And I just want to go back to that for a second because Broken Spoke had been closed because of the two back-to-back -back hurricanes. Yeah. So they are reopening in full force. Everything has been repaired, um, and they're really excited. So, And that's, one of the for me, one of the cooler places to hang out in Daytona. Yeah. I really like the vibe that it has because they do the fire pits and the lights and the trees and... It's just, it's a cool hangout spot um, mm -hmm. for me. Yep. But also on Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, they're trying to ba break a world record yeah, for women riders. Up. Let me bring that up because I, uh, I actually have a thing here somewhere. Go ahead, keep talking about it. Oh, that was all I had. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, so they're trying to break a world record for women riders. I think they're looking for like 1,133 women riders to meet up at Skips, and then they're going to ride into the Broken Spoke. I think they have like, and it's, last I knew, they had around 700 registered. And something about it is actually going to bring the record back to the United States. Yes. I mean, that's the that's the real news. Here's a little clip that I found online. Um, women's Riders World Record, March 17, 2018, Daytona Meetup. Um, we need 1,133 lady riders to bring the world record to the USA. You can find more information at ribbonriders.org. Um, free admission, free lunch. Uh, sponsored by Skips, Russ Brown, The Broken Spoke, obviously. You can re reserve your tickets now. Um, if you even have an idea that you're going to be there, go and sign up with these people and help them uh, achieve this record. But here's, uh, here's everything that I was talking about, The Broken Spoke, man. I mean, you know, the Rat Rod Invasion, the Uncle Cracker, great bunch of guys like... Oh my God, they wish, were so yeah, cool! I wish Amelia was going to be with us because that's she, she's that's one of her favorites. Yeah, well, and that was like one of her first motorcycle events. Uncle yeah. Cracker was playing in Daytona, and not only did she get to meet him, but they brought her up on stage, and she sat on stage taking pictures through their whole show. Yeah, they were the coolest were guys so nice to, to, to a young girl just entering the industry. So that was awesome. So, also happening in Daytona, since we talked about Harley-Davidson, Indian. Robbie Bugs Pearson to run Indian Scout FTR 750 for 2018 American Flat Track season. Like I said, everyone in the industry is talking about the Daytona race. Um, you know, obviously the excitement from last year is carrying over. It's going to be pretty badass, but... Um, what do you well, think? Well, and the FTR is just proven. I mean, it's just track proven. You mm -hmm. know, everybody's going, hey... If they can afford it or they can find somebody to afford it for them, you know, that's the bike of choice, you know. Well, the and I'll, I'll tell you one of the greatest things and one of the things that, you know, really points out to to Indian, you know, and, and the intellect that's behind some of the moves that they're making. How many privateers do you think are going to end, end up being fielded on Indian motorcycles this year with the, the uh, contingency programs that they're putting out? Oh, yeah, for sure. Brilliant. 
Absolutely brilliant, you know, and that's that's really where the excitement for racing starts at the racer level is any kind of support that you can get at all because it's hard to mm-hmm. be out at these things, especially especially at the level that you're racing, you know, the the big time rallies and stuff. So, yeah, good for Indian. Definitely. Um, probably not so good for Harley Davidson because probably, there's going to be an, there's going to be an army of Indian riders out there. You know what though? I think I think sometimes being the underdog is you know, you don't have that pressure um of trying to go back and repeat. And so I bet that they've spent a ton of time testing. Um, you know, that Harley's taken a lot of time and just put those bikes to the test to find out, you know, can we keep up? Can we, you know, can we make these things go? Like that FTR? Um or are we just gonna be, you know, lagging behind again? Yeah. Um and they had a couple, you know, Second, third place wins, that sort of stuff. Um, guard is ready for us, so okay. Um, let's try. Let's try that <laughs> if we can. Okay, you have to give me a minute because he has a uh, a, a less than simple operation for calling him. So yeah, you just got to call the main office and then. Thank you for calling Arch Motorcycle Company. If you know your party's extension, slash transferring to. Thank you for calling Arch Motorcycle Company. For the by name directory, please press 9. For sales, press 1. For parts, press 2. General inquiries, press 0. Thank you. <laughs> this really? Is, this is my lot in life. Huh. Thank you for calling Arch Motorcycle Company. <laughs> If you know your party's extension, dial it now to dial by name. It's not the first time. Transferring to. Thank you for calling Arch Motorcycle Company. For a dial by name directory, please press 9. For sales, press 1. For parts, press 2. General inquiries, press 0. Thank you. Okay. Okay. (laughs) That's fun. I honestly did what I was told, Ken. I don't. Yeah, know. I know. I don't no, know. I know. I'm sure. I just texted him. Let's try. Thank one you more for time. calling Arch Motorcycle Company. If you know your part- transferring to. Thank you for calling Arch Motorcycle Company. <laughs> okay, that's not working. <laughs> so um, let's see what he says. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but it's not the first time we've been on on the on the air live that things have not gone as planned. Oh, no. Jesus. Not a huge deal. Well, no, I was. Um, can he call you? Yes, he can. Just tell him to call okay. that number that we gave him. Okay. Um... Oh, come on, just copy. The world of life broadcast. is here. Nice to see you on here, Mama. And RJ Powell. RJ's in the house, right on. I'm, I'm surprised RJ's still talking to me after the weekend and watching. Me too. Actually, that Matt Real is talking to you ever again uh, as a mate. Okay. Really? What'd you do? There we go. Okay, you're live on the air with Chris and Tim. Hey man, how you doing? Hey. Little technological was... issues. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, that never happens. <laughs> can you guys hear me all right? We can. Yep. Can you hear us? I can. Well, good. We got Perfect. some of this stuff working. Nice. <laughs> Fingers crossed it'll keep working. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> I can't ask how things are going because it seems like there's just been a whirlwind of activity there, Garden. Um, do you okay, want to? I, I don't think we next <laughs> need, necessarily need to go through the entire litany of things of how Arch started, 
Um, but it seems like in this last, you know, six months, things have really kicked into gear. Um, I guess, you know, I guess that's the result of five and a half years of, you know, a little group of people working their tails off is all of a sudden the last six months, it seems like we've done a whole bunch, <laughs> Yeah, but, um, but yeah, I guess it's, it was always the plan from the beginning to have three bikes and, um, we finally just were able to make it happen, you know? Yeah. Which, which ones, um, I think just telling people about, you know, I think Chris has pictures up for everyone of the, the three different bikes, but I think going with kind of the original, the KR GT1, um, the new redesign that you guys um, launched over at, was it EICMA? Um, what's different about that one that as compared to the previous models? So a lot of things that you, that you won't see, which are... Um, in anticipation of and and towards our efforts to get Euro 4 homologated, which is uh, things like the addition of anti-lock brakes and, um, you know, trying to just meet all the sound and emissions and funky requirements that Euro 4 has. Sure. Um, and then the more obvious stuff is even a little bit subtle, too. Um, we changed the shape of the gas tank a little bit so that it's just a little more comfortable for the rider um we have an updated owens uh front fork which has a, a proprietary fork lower for um a larger uh caliper that we're using so a little more stopping power up front okay. um we've redesigned the front cowling which we're just in the process now of getting into into manufacture Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, a couple other small changes, like just updating the seat pan, which we weren't really happy with. And, but, again, a lot of these things are won't be, like, super noticeable at first glance, but then as you look at it, you'll see the, the forks are beefier and the front brakes are beefier and, um, you know, some stuff is just a little more ergonomic to the rider. Well, and the advancements that you guys are making in these uh, in these models, this is not something that comes from, hey, we'd like to change this, or you know, this is not visually appealing. You are, you're actually doing some some serious riding with these motorcycles. I think that's something important to note. Yeah, we've. I mean, it's something that people probably don't don't um, get on face. You know, either is that we probably have logged you know in excess of. You know, I'm sure it's between 100 and 150 thousand miles on these things in real world, just riding. We just have a fleet of four or five bikes that we're just riding the, you know, what out of. The fact that you know Keanu is like the the ultimate test rider, right? I mean, he he'll break anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, by virtue of just how how many miles he rides, but he, totally. he seems to be able to make some of the bikes do things that none of the rest of us can make it do, whether it's some weird <laughs> electronic thing and, and then we can't get it to do it again or, you know, but it's kind of funny. We tease him about it. Well, and he's super thoughtful about when he comes back, it's not like, Oh yeah, it rides great. You know, there's like very yeah. specific feedback. I mean, that's one of the things that I always remember is, you know, him coming back from some of those rides and, and giving very specific feedback about, you know, either fork dampening or braking or, you know, when I was going into a left-hand turn, and I think that's, you know, I, I think that's kind of lost on a lot of people. They just mm. don't understand yeah. because they haven't put those kind of miles on. Uh, but he really right. also, understands like, that. Right. And also, like you said, it's not like he goes, eh, a couple of days ago I heard this clunk one time. You know, he's like yeah. really specific. thing and that was on Tuesday <laughs> mm -hmm. well, and I think I think maybe a lot of people don't don't know that about Keanu either is that's that's the mark of a real a real rider a racer you want when you can give good report like that and you're really intimately in touch with the operation of a motorcycle you know and that's that's the kind of rider that he is this is not something that's just like oh yeah you know he he also likes motorcycles and surfing and sunsets on the beach <laughs> 
You know, I guess it was one of the things in the beginning that sort of um, even attracted me to the idea or that even sort of made us was just his the thoughtfulness to to his approach to the writing experience and i'm sure it's just it's probably partly his personality and and then partly you know what he does for a living he has to pay attention to details and and study things you know so yeah for sure well and i think that's you know with the kind of the the trio there of you ryan and Keanu, you know, and you guys all being insanely detail oriented um, and not yeah. willing to kind of give up on anything, you know, not willing to settle for mediocrity um, is really unusual. And I don't think that that happens in a lot of a lot of the bigger OEMs because they have to get to, you know, like we're launching this bike. It doesn't matter that, you know, the seat pan is way too wide or that this is, you know, not whatever they just they're like this has got to happen because we've got dealers and you guys have a little bit of the luxury of being able to really hone in on those specifics and i think that really makes you know that bike worth every bit of the seventy eight thousand dollars if not more sometimes it's a it's a bit of a curse Uh you know you're right i mean larger manufacturers you know they have um, probably equal parts uh, marketing, sales, and and design and engineering, and so oftentimes there's a you know a, a marketing or a sales deadline mandate that overrides being able to be super you know scrutinous and and picky and yeah and we haven't you know we're small enough that we don't apply that stuff. We just want to make sure it's the best thing we can do, and we're not happy until it is you know and and you can never have perfection so i guess he's never happy (laughs) (laughs) well and that's kind of how the s came about right i mean you guys wanted to build on the platform of the krgt1 right you wanted but you wanted something that was even more of that same thing is am i correct yeah, I mean, you know, you you know, you know so much of the history, Ken. That um, <laughs> I know the the S is really a result of that's probably the bike I would have built out of the gate if I was just more on my own. You know, the KR GT one was really um, more trying to um, deliver, you know, on what Keanu was, was hoping hoping for in a motorcycle. That idea of a you know big american v-twin cruiser that performed and mm-hmm. so i guess the 1s is more if i was left to my own devices maybe what i would have done in the beginning mm-hmm. um you know that's not to say that the whole thing is just you know from me because it's definitely very much a um, a collective here so um but yeah now let's take let's take people a little bit through the timeline. You know, you you said earlier, Ken, how we don't necessarily have to introduce the whole storyline, but let let's start for uh, some of your history, where you, where you come up, how you come up into motorcycling, and you know some of the some of the highlight reel from from Guard Hollander's career. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a short highlight reel. <laughs> um, you know, I started riding when I was pretty young which was um i was about eight years old and this was you know like mid 60s sort of fell under the curse of the motorcycle and was you you know i mean it was all i thought about until and drugs and rock and roll, you know. <laughs> and, and then shortly thereafter, how well they fit with the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, so I guess it was um, after, um, you know, uh, after a sh- short racing career that ended in my m- mid-20s, then I sort of tried to get away from the motorcycle world a little bit. It didn't work really good, and I guess by... You know, eight or ten years later, I was back in it, and maybe a tiny, tiny bit more mature, and feeling like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I don't need to run from this. Maybe this is where I belong. And um, 
and then that's I guess about the time I sort of got involved in the the custom V twin world, and uh, and then of course had you know a number of different shops and an Indian dealership, and and then uh, ultimately Chop Rods, which you know man and that was and built the bike for him. That that was where I really got to know you. I was such a fan of the stuff that you built out of Chop Rods. Like I was. I was always hanging on my seat waiting to see what was coming out of there next, man, because <laughs> you were building the maddest shit. That's nice for you to say. You had to wait a while in between each of them because <laughs> I, I <laughs> yeah, barely took my time. <laughs> well, and you had some you had some um, some mentors along the way, right? Um, I mean, I, I don't know that I had specifically mentors. I had... Um, or I had. I mean, yeah, obviously, were, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the the main person that really sort of got me interested in it was Russ Tom, who mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you guys know know of Russ, yeah. but I don't know how much he's been remembered or forgotten in, in the current sort of climate. But I knew Russ in Seattle, and we we knew each other from from motocross, and his family owned the Harley dealership. And Russ um, successfully built the dealership up, uh, you know, I won't, won't say single-handedly, but he was definitely the driving force, um, you know, as he, become, as he became uh, a little more mature and shaped the downtown Harley into, into what it became, which in the, I guess, in the 80s and 90s, it was, you know, quite a powerhouse. And Russ built some interesting motorcycles um blended i guess his you know his his experience with racing and um with harley as a platform and i always thought that was kind of cool before yeah. that um before that i was a bit of a off-road purist and didn't think street bikes made a whole bunch of sense and harley's made the least sense of any of them you know <laughs> <laughs> um but but looking at it from a little bit of a, and I, I always feel a little douchey saying this, you know, but looking at it from a little bit of an artistic point of view to use something like that that has its heritage and also is so rooted stylistically in, in its heritage um, as a platform for something that could be a little more performance-oriented or a little bit more of a, you know, a, Base a canvas for for a piece of art, I guess, was kind of interesting to me, and and that's what started it. Um, before that, it was just totally, you know, it had to be a racing motorcycle, or I could have gave a crap about it. <laughs> well, I rem you know, I remember the first time actually I saw a Chop Rods bike, which was at Lichter's um, deal when it was uh, in Sturgis, and it was that. Um, I, of course, I can't remember any of the names of any of them, but it was an orange bike, and there was a photographer oh, yeah. riding them. Uh, yeah, it was parked outside. It wasn't even in the thing. <laughs> yeah, it was parked outside, correct. And I was this thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just, it was, I, I remember that distinctly. I also remember Jesse James riding in the, the lobby of that show as well. <laughs> yeah. on the back of his bike. So... Um, that was, and I that also was Tom remember Zimberoff. Yeah. yeah, that that was Tom Zimberoff, and he rode it from from like downtown Sturgis to. I think that thing was in a museum, like in Rapid City or outside of Rapid yeah. City. And yeah, yeah, it was, was probably a best. thirty or forty mile ride each direction. And I remember Tom, you know, saying that how much fun he had riding it, but also how much pain he was in. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's great. It wasn't though. exactly that's a great. comfortable cruiser. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I remember seeing some of Russ Tom's bikes because I believe uh, Lichter had one of his bikes in one of his shows as well um, and being impressed by kind of, like you said, stylistically, just something really different, you know? So it's right. cool. You know, and, 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 you know, what you just mentioned about, you know, being taking that platform and making it into something completely different i mean that's really what you did with that method 143 right i mean that is a completely out of the box not what you would think a v-twin would be in right yeah and it also i mean i think you know from a material i mean 
the styling is one thing and, and you really, you almost have to see it in person. I mean, I think our bikes are generally that way anyway, but that one, yeah. is especially you almost have to see it in person to appreciate sort of this idea of layers and, and, um, a shape that continues, but in, in layers and different materials and textures. And, but also the idea of, you know, a carbon monocell chassis and, you know, trying to push yeah, some sort of, uh, some boundaries with technology and stuff too that's that's maybe not the norm in the motorcycle world listen i, I want to ride this motorcycle i'm i'm infamous for taking <laughs> inappropriate motorcycles to track days like when harley would come out with stuff like their 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 street rod when they first came out with that little more european riding position i took that thing to track days and freaked out guys on svts and I, I would love to ride this motorcycle. I can't even imagine That's it's awesome. got to be a monster <laughs> on the track. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, we're dying to ride it too. <laughs> we've had <laughs> we've had only really short stints on it, and and you know, the first bike is is not obviously not the final thing. So we're working on all the industrialization and engineering, and the the finished bike will be much lighter. And we're actually working on some new. Um, drivetrain configuration and stuff. So the finished product, I think, is going to be pretty insane. And is and that going to be, be manufactured here in the U.S., or is Suter going to be building that? Um, no, Suter's helping us with some of the engineering, and, and the, the plan is for them to build the swing arm. Um, okay. But uh, the carbon stuff will probably have BST do. I mean, that's who's... Mm -hmm who's done our wheels and, and they're currently like working on the, the, um, you know, verifying the design and the structural elements for the chassis. And then they'll build the tooling and build the chassis. So, um, but other than that, everything built here and we'll assemble them here, obviously. That's so great. Yeah. And I don't think people realize, you know, what the operation is there, but I mean, it's like a few, meticulously building and designing all day long like every day <laughs> you know it's not this giant operation and at the same time it's like the people that are there are so committed to kind of that final product and that product that's really um you know we really sort of taken our time building a good team and um i mean obviously with ryan there from the beginning he's such a he's such a foundational part of it and um, but as we've added to the team, um, it's really a nice small team. And I guess, you know, it, it sort of depends on what you're comparing it to. If I compare it to my last chop rod shop, it seems like a really giant, giant. operation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and probably compared to most shops these days too, it is, but compared yeah. to, um, you know, com com I mean, considering that we're like a bona fide, production motorcycle company that tries to act that way we're pretty pretty tiny operation with human yeah. resources either yeah you know <laughs> this is this is something that we were talking about again and again over the um over the ims tour because we were working on a motorcycle that had a lot of handcrafted parts on it you know and one in particular was when we got to the motor and danny danny uh fitzmorris from zippers did the motor for that thing and we talked about the difference of a of an actual handcrafted power plant you know and that approach to manufacturing i just think is such hey a guys i'm uh, we're having s small technical difficulties i'm missing some of what you're saying but i think i'm getting the gist of it i, w I was saying how um you know the 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 approach of small handcrafted american manufacturing i think is a it's a really special thing to our country you know, and and I think that there's there's people that are actually looking for that, and they're looking for the kind of products that come out of that process. Well, I mean, it's for sure, and and something that 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 I'm proud of is that, and I, it might sound cliche, but um, we're building an American product in America. Now, that, you know, it doesn't mean every single piece is because obviously we also want to use the best components. But uh, you know, by and large, the if we have a choice for the best component, it comes from the U.S. That's what we're going to use. But then we try to make as many things as we can, you know. And um, it's built here in L.A., you know. 
Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, yeah, that's I mean, that's what I was getting at too, was the, the idea of the handcrafted process. You know, I, I agree with you. You know, we used to beat the drum so much about Buy America, Buy American, but it really has to be a choice about the best products that you can bring to it. But that process of, you know, hand creating, hand crafting, that's, that's really becoming an American manufacturing process. I don't know. I always tend... I don't necessarily consider our bikes handcrafted because we're using a lot of advanced technology and machines that that you know have great repeatability. But it's certainly small batch, and, and you know you could use all those kind of words and artisanal and and they're hand they're hand assembled. That's for sure. So mm-hmm. we may may not be you know hand shaping the body work and and that kind of thing. But we don't have robots right. taking our chassis and absolutely. You know, <laughs> absolutely so, so what's next for um for arch wow um so you know we we last year was pretty intense because on top of doing what we did in such a short time frame i mean from um i mean i had the basic design of the one s for uh maybe a year before we really committed to to building it for ICMA and it was a pretty basic um, you know profile image of it without any of the 3D work done mm-hmm. and so from the time that we committed to go to ICMA with three motorcycles I think it was June um, you know I went back and tried to, to uh, pin it all together and there are some really weird interesting coincidences to the dates that we launched the project and when it was done and you know um, but i won't bore you with that stuff but anyway it was super short time frame and we also had to move so we moved the whole facility um that same month we had to be out by the end of june our old property and into a new facility. So fortunately it was a local move, but it still was, man, it was intense. 20,000 square feet of manufacturing to move it and try not to lose too much momentum while you're launching this project to take three, you know, two brand new and one, you know, you know, fairly redesigned motorcycle um, to, you know, the world's biggest motorcycle show in Italy was was pretty intense. So um, really what's next for us now is we're hard at work not only, like, uh, getting the plant into shape and building up inventory again for the new KRGT1, which we're, you know, filling orders for, but um, industrializing the two new bikes. And it's um, it's a full-time deal, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll work on we're hoping to have the first one uh, S uh, road worthy to test to put some real miles on here in the next few weeks, and um, the one four three might be, you know, summertime before we really have a version of it that we can flog other than just riding down the street, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of work. It sometimes I miss the old days of just you know taking some tube and a and my eyeball and the frame fixture and (laughs) building a frame and sticking some wheels on an engine and going and riding it, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Now there's such a process to what we do that (laughs) sometimes it's a little painful waiting for it. Yeah. Are there, hey, Heathers out there, do you have any questions from people online? No, she's not out there. No, sorry. Uh, no, actually, he did a re- he really did a good job, like talking about his history and where they're coming from and where they're headed to. Um, couple shout outs. Chris Greathouse says, uh, <laughs> "Fathead says what's up." Um, Man, that's a blast from the past. Right. Yeah. So no, you did just a great job, you know, filling everybody in and showing people where you're going. So I think people really appreciate it we had we had quite a few people making comments when we put the ad up about you being our guest today that you know now we had their attention and they couldn't wait for you to come on and talk about this stuff so this was this was something that's really nice yeah (laughs) i have a question for you that would i would be remiss without asking 
how did this whole square square space Super there you Bowl, go I mean, let's did talk you Super ever Bowl think oh, man. you were gonna have a motorcycle in a in a Super Bowl I collection know. guard you know yeah. I'm always saying my 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 joke here is that we're the biggest little motorcycle company in the world um yeah. You know, I think it's, um, I think it's, you know, listen, I always believe heavily in luck. I think, um, I don't think anybody's just successful at anything just by luck, but if you work your ass off, right, if nothing else, I think if I've had any skill over the years, the biggest one has been just not quitting. And I'm sure, you know, the old timers that have been around the industry would agree, you know, so um, but a heavy dose of luck, and obviously, you know, the Keanu factor helps some of that stuff. But um, we, honest to God, had a Squarespace website, and um, they figured that out. And they, you know, they've done this series of campaigns each year the last few years with celebrities who were actual Squarespace customers, and they approached Keanu and. Then Keanu told me about it, and we were both really cautious about it. You know, he didn't want to do anything that would seem douchey, and <laughs> he thought it was a little bit uh, bourgeois to have a, a commercial during the Super Bowl that's featuring an eighty thousand dollar motorcycle. Like, who gives a shit? You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not not like we're selling a an energy drink or some potato chips or you know. Um, yeah. But the more that he talked to the Squarespace people and they shared their the creative ideas, and he got involved in them, and then telling me you know about it, um, I felt more and more comfortable with it, and ultimately I I made it his decision because it's not really an arch commercial, you know, it's really it, it's kind of fun to hear people say, hey, I saw the arch commercial. But yeah, it's really yeah. a Squarespace commercial featuring Keanu. It just so happens that the subject matter is because he's a co-owner of a motorcycle company that has a Squarespace website, you know? Yeah. So, again, a nice dose of luck, I guess. Yeah. It's, yeah. It would have been, it would have been hard to imagine, Guard, that first time that uh, I stepped foot in your house and the three of us met that this is where it would be, <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I think there's a whole bunch of it I, mean, I couldn't imagine. And, and I think yeah. sometimes that's good because, you know, some of it's, oh, yeah, I, that's funny. I can hear, yeah, I can yeah. hear the commercial in the background. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's also an element of, uh, it all seems like fun and games, but it's a, it's a hell of a lot of work and you have to change, you know, aspects of your life to make it happen and, and you have to sort of make it everything. Um, and so sometimes you can feel a little bit like uh, you're you're lucky and unlucky at the same time, you know. My question is, how much did he have to practice to be able to surf on that motorcycle like that? <laughs> you know, I I don't I think he's very open about the fact that um, he had some some safe. <laughs> so he wasn't he wasn't totally free riding it, but I was there when they did it, and it, it was pretty ballsy anyway. I don't know. Yeah. You know that everybody would get up and stand on a a motorcycle that's being slightly stabilized at fifty miles right. an hour with a couple cables hooked to your waist. You know, yep. yeah, um, hard pass. <laughs> and and I think he he did it enough times in that few days that I think he was really thinking that he wanted to maybe try doing it without the cable. <laughs> oh God, please no. No, please listen on, seriously. Let Larry be a lesson. I, I can dig it because sometimes when you're trying to stage stuff that looks like this, it's actually more dangerous than if you would have just done it. Like you can't <laughs> you can't believe that. But was what was it recently? It was had done a stunt, um Tom Cruise, I think, did a stunt where they, they strapped him to the side of an airplane on takeoff for a movie. Yeah. And like yeah, and he crazy, actually man. did it. You know what I mean? And yeah. And being strapped to the side of an airplane is probably not much better than just holding on to it. I don't think, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. well, mentally. Yeah. And, and you know, well, the motorcycle is, you know, two or three feet from the back of this big camera rig. Um, it, there is an element to it that if you've surfed a motorcycle before doing it on an open road without a, something right in front of you mentally is maybe a little bit easier but right. anyway you know he's he's never 
he's always open about the fact that he leaves the real dangerous stunt stuff to the stunt guys. But then, you know, I'm always amazed at, at 53 years old and he no still kidding. does yeah. so much of his own physical stuff and just the training that he goes through is, is really impressive. I know what it feels like to be, you know, on the wrong side of 50 and I hurt when I get out of bed. So <laughs> <laughs> training all day long, all week long when yeah. at that age to do that stuff is, um, you know, makes you really respect the guy. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, I just remember, you know, I'll close with this. I remember, you know, at one particular day, I think I just happened to be in Hawthorne that day when he was coming back from, I think Europe or Japan or something. He picked up a bike that morning, went and rode it for like eight hours, came back with this like detailed report of what was going on with the bike and then went through a whole bunch of other kind of stuff and then was on the road again. And just his dedication to getting stuff done. And when he says he's going to get something done, he gets it done, you know, and that is yeah, like, that is unusual sure. these days. Yeah. Well, I would be a challenge perception wise and you know you remember me talking about that Ken it was oh, yeah. one of the reasons why I wasn't sold on the idea of doing it it certainly wasn't you know something that I went and pitched to him yeah. was the perception of having a, a Hollywood personality involved in a motorcycle company I knew that it would be you know it would take some time for people to understand that it you know he wasn't just like a spokesperson that would give a motorcycle to right you know he's he's in it blood sweat and tears and uh, and so that that was when i knew that that was the guy that he was and that's what he was talking about doing then i was like okay well maybe we have a chance when and yeah. you ca and you kind of know that too like if you spend any time like as as a motorcycle journalist the places i've seen him pop up it's not stuff that someone does because of, of the pr factor you know what I mean? He's there because yeah. he, he's a fan, you know? Yeah, he doesn't go anywhere to get his picture taken by paparazzi. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty, it's pretty intensely obnoxious when it's going down. So right. he has to really want to be there to put up with that stuff. For sure. Right yes, on guard. Sir. We won't keep you any longer, but um, as always, it's great to talk to you. We appreciate you taking the time. Likewise. And, um, you know, I feel... I feel, you know, still obviously connected to the to the V twin industry and the whole chopper thing, but I'm oddly disconnected. So it's nice to sort of have a little bit of sort of like old home chat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. It, you know, it's and it's been it's been for me. It's been quite a while since we've had a chance to catch up, man. So it's really good talking yeah, to you for today. Sure. Yes, yeah, sir. Likewise. Well, I'm excited. Right, guys, I'm excited care. to see what happens next, man. And, you know, we, we wish you all the best. And please keep us on your editor's list for any press releases and stuff, and we'll we'll help you get that message out. Will do. And thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Garrett. See you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Very cool. Very cool. You know, the one question that I didn't think about asking until, until just we were heading out was uh, – has he got any feedback from Eric Buell? Because I could see Eric being very, very into this whole proposition. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like for, for where Eric was heading the I whole time through the end of the Buell years and like even into the EBC bikes and stuff or EBR bikes, like yeah. I, I could just see him being all over something like that. Um, I can tell you that um, Ryan is a huge Buell fan. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's owned any Harley Davidsons except for Buells. Yeah. So um, he's a huge fan of Buells. Um, but I'm just going to ask him right now um, and see if he. I'm a back. I'm a pretty big fan of Eric Buells too. I you know I was lucky. Enough. I mean, first of all, he's from the area we're from. I know people that raced with him when they were young, and I've heard stories about him forever. And... Oh yeah, Mister Fish. He's got great yeah, stories yeah. about Eric Buell. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the guy that does my machine work on my chopper projects used to race with Eric Buell when they were young guys, and he said the uh, the the one thing about Eric is like he was never ready to go to the races. Like Mister Fisher's a machinist, so he was always like you know had his stuff, his poop in a group, like they call it. But Eric would be uh, notoriously in the back of the box truck on the way to the races, putting his heads back on his bike, and you know like <laughs> it was all the time. He said, you know, but. <laughs> 
That's funny. Right? That's funny how you know people like that, like somebody super successful like Eric, um, could work like that. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, that kind of makes sense. Yep. If you look at the arc of a few companies. Um, Absolutely. So, so um, we still have some, some news to get to. Um, sure. Well, you get that up. Mark V just got here. You're late, Mark. Mark. Mark, you missed. You, you're answer. late. You're late, dude. Um, yeah, Amelia says, hi, Dad. Uh-huh. And, uh, my kiddo. Chris Greathouse says, nice show, great job, my friends. We've got Clinton and Emily and a bunch of people watching, so. Right nice. on. Well, I appreciate the guy, the time sure. you guys are spending with us. You know, we know this is a, a v- most valuable resource and the greatest gift you can give somebody else is your time. So we appreciate it, and we try to fill this 90 minutes with, with all the bullshit we can fit is our tagline, but, you know, we're trying to be useful to you here and somewhat amusing. So... On with the news to um, just after Daytona, we're all going to be making our way back up to Minnesota for the Donnie Smith show. Um, this show, I don't even know what to say other than it's the show that other shows should be modeled after. You know, it's part bike show, part industry show, part swap meet. You cars, know, tattoos. Cars, tattoos. Like, it's it's really just become a cultural mecca. They're throwing in flat track racing this year. Yep. Indoor flat track, and it is the only reason you are dragging my sorry behind to Minnesota <laughs> after Daytona. That's cruel and unusual punishment. It is. It that is. is. But it is a super cool show, so it's totally worth it. Um. So yeah, nice. I've, I've never been to it. But you I've should heard go. It's great. Oh yeah, you should come up with us this year, man. It's a it's a yeah. really good time. It I really probably, is. I probably, I probably won't, but all right. <laughs> Um, we were talking okay. about we were talking about American Flat Track um, presented by Russ Brown in Daytona. Um, the whole schedule is on their website. You can go to AmericanFlatTrack.com, see everything that's going on throughout the year. They have a pretty full schedule, a um, lot of great action. You know, like I said earlier, the the sport has been rejuvenated as of late, and um, they're really bringing it to you. A lot of a lot of changes. A lot of you know things are moving a lot faster and. Um, hot leathers win a trip to Laconia Motorcycle Week. Yeah, three night stay at Steel Hill Resorts VIP package from Laconia Roadhouse. One year subscription to Cycle Source. Uh, that tra- crappy rag. Traveling cash from <laughs> Twisted Tea. Custom engraved whiskey barrel top from Jack Daniels. Um, black Epiphone Les Paul Studio guitar. Riding apparel from your friends at Laconia Harley Davidson. One of a kind USA made Laconia 95th anniversary leather vest from Hot Leathers. 95 years. Right? Damn. And the bookies yep. are running wild trying to see what the odds are for 100. But that's a whole other story. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? That, that, um, that deal, that contest is such a testament to kind of where Hot Leathers is at these days. You know, they. Oh. That is no small feat to put something like that together. You know, Andy works his butt off over there trying to put together stuff that his customers want, that people are interested in. And, I mean, that's a great prize package. Um, And for him to go kind of out of his way to get all that going. And, yeah, he'll get everybody's emails from it. Um, And so will everybody else. But But it's not like he's giving away some stickers and and a keychain. You know what I mean? Like, Like that's for real. It's a real deal. Yeah. 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 I'm happy to say that I'm wearing my Hot Leathers vest today. Yeah. So I do think it's cool that Hot Leathers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was you, you got it, baby. You got it. That oh, that is product placement right there, man. Oh, that that's good. That so good listen. Wait, hey. While we're on the subject of product placement, I have something to offer to that today. Oh, Black Brand, my friends at Black Brand, Howard Kelly, have sent mm-hmm. us over. Heather and I both. Helmet. Some cheater helmets. Hmm, Dig deal. that, man. Like nice, lightweight, half helmets. We're going to be testing these things out in Daytona. Um, see how well they hold up to the gravel with the iron horse. And, you know, because you always just drop your helmet right beside your bike. Yeah. Can I take the visor off mine? You can. I'm already going to look like Kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Heather has such a little head and little body that no matter what helmet she puts on, she looks like the great kazoo from Fred Flintstone. 
It's, <laughs> it's the best shit ever. It's not funny. So anyway, real quick, one thing I want to say about Hot Leathers is, and I don't like social media, but I dig their social media. They're not like pushing their product in people's faces. No, you know They're what? showing motorcycles and cool places and cool things, and, they and give, they're they out there. They give credit to other people. Yeah. Like that's, that's one of the only companies I can say that really devotes their social media space to perpetuate in other people's careers and and creations, and they so, really do a lot. Yeah, of that. kudos to them because yeah. like I never see an ad for like, hey, buy this T-shirt or yeah. look at this. It's hey, check out this cool bike we saw at hashtag Mama Tried. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back to Mama Tried. I want to blow my brains I'm out. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> oh, hey, Chris, did I tell you I'm going to get a tattoo while I'm down in Daytona? If you tell me Mama say, Tried, I'm kicking Mama you in the Mama Tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's some funny shit right there, boy. Old English right across my stomach. <laughs> yeah, so Ditch just came in. Ditch, you're late, too. I know. So, what happened? So that We're makes me to... ask, does 7 o'clock? Yeah, does this time not work? We need to hear from people. We're trying to find the perfect time that's like the sweet spot between East Coast people and West Coast people because we have such a wide audience. And I need to check my... Eyelids for lightly. So, so um, let me get another piece of news up here. Harley Davidson, obviously, uh, a couple weeks back, we heard the Kansas City plant closing news, and Harley Davidson now reports that they won't reconsider Kansas City plant. Um, apparently, a large group of lawmakers from Missouri want Harley Davidson to reconsider keeping the plant open, obviously, because there's 800 jobs at stake. Um, Harley Davidson responded by saying the plant closure is based on the market and is not a reflection of the tremendous job done by workers in Kansas City. This is something that that bodes commentary and demands, you know, reason that we're just in a different time in motorcycling. You know what I mean? There's going to be there's a lot a lot of crazy shit going on right now. My heart goes out to anybody who was affected by that and lost a job. But the truth is, we need a new business model in the American motorcycle, the custom motorcycle scene, motorcycling at large just needs a new business model to deal with the fact that in the super consumer seat right now is less people. You know, and it's and nothing's going to change that. No matter how many fancy terms you come out with, like experiential marketing and, you know, all this rhetoric, it's not going to change the fact that we need a new model. And this is going to be the, the painful part of that is going to be that, you know, we're probably going to see more of this stuff happen before it starts to get better. So, Yep. And, you know, obviously it's going to mean more jobs in York, right? I mean, they yeah. got to do yeah. they, It's not like yeah. they're taking away 800 jobs and they're not adding them somewhere. You know, yeah, they probably think, won't have 800 more. But, no, I think I saw it was like close to 600, actually, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, yeah. but it was, a, it was a fair number of jobs. Yeah, they actually yeah. they actually even said that in a report that they're they're moving those jobs to York. And, I mean, that's... yeah. You know, hey Neil Ryan. Work. Neil Ryan is in the house. Neil, Neil you missed it. We were just talking about Donnie Smith show yeah. and how yeah, it's we the only way that Chris is going to get me to go to Minneapolis in March <laughs> because it's just that cool, right? Nice. There's, you know what though, like just to go back to that. There's so much going on at Donnie Smith. Like I remember going to this show and it was great that it was just a a bike show that had a, a swap meet element in it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. now, like, to see what it's become, and it keeps expanding and just keeps getting crazy big, man. It's it's one of our favorite things to do. Well, the only way that I would go there is if we could do a live show from there. What do you say, Chris? Can you pull your hair out and do that? I think I can. Oh. I think hey, I can do well, it. Well, yeah, we'll already have finished the magazine, I think. Why not? So looking forward to Sturgis, um, Leonard Skinner at the Buffalo Chip. Oh, and mm -hmm. Kid Rock and Lita and Ford. Kid Rock. And Lita Ford. I saw that today, Lita Ford. Um, I was like, oh, who's the big, who's the big 80? Oh, it's Lita Ford. I mean, <laughs> nothing against Lita Ford, but. Whoa. Hey, but you've got something going on at the Buffalo <laughs> Chip, don't you? Can I, are you doing Aiden's ride out of there? I am doing Aiden's ride Sweet. out of there. It's going to be on Tuesday. Um, we're going to do a nice little ride out to Belfouche. We're going to have lunch out there, brunch kind of thing. I need to call them. And, and who's that, that sponsored but, by? Uh, um, who's it sponsored by? Geico. <laughs> There you go. Geico Motor Clown shoes. Complete clown shoes. Hey, yeah. we're nothing um, if not professional on this show. That's right. No, it's going to be a great it's going to be a great ride this year. Um I might even be there. You never know. I might even show up. <laughs> Jesus. 
completely <laughs> losing control. Yeah. So um, there's ton, tons of stuff still left to talk about in the news, but for one second I want to take a break. And for anybody who was watching the progress, for three months we were working on a thing called the War Pony. And this is where I have to fess up that our version of reality television or whatever the hell it is that we do is actually real time, real life. So we're working on a war pony, and uh, many of you might have seen that we didn't get it fired up on stage. Stupid, stupid, stupid problem. We were using the battery too much for testing and wiring, and when it came time to start it, we needed 10 volts of power to, to fire up the Thunder Max auto tuner and our battery was dropping down to 4.9 and there was no way we were getting that thing started. So mm -hmm. there's a picture up right now. This is going to be the bike that we take to Bonneville to the land speed trials this year. Um, in short order, as soon as we get done with this issue of the publication, we're going to go back to it. But And after Daytona, but between Donnie Smith. Just saying. I want to tell you what the real experience was. There's a picture up right now of a group of guys that were crowded around this motorcycle that we're going to be damned to see it not finished on that stage. And here's here's the premise. Like, before the haters come out of the woodwork, we had 90 days, seven cities that we were driving back and forth across the country, 17,500 miles we drove, three issues of the magazine, huh. one case of the flu where even the dog was sick, and three holidays, you know, yep. which included Thanksgiving... Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's if you count that and, that and, kind of and Valentine's count. Day so that's the fourth holiday you know so the fact that we were able to take this from a bare naked frame at the first show in Long Beach and have it look like this motorcycle and it was finished I'm so proud of all my guys I'm so grateful for everybody that that lent a hand and I mean this was builders across the country that just came on that stage and did stuff on the bike and you know we we really came together at the end and made it an incredible thing and it was uh it was a shame that it didn't run, but it didn't take away from the, the overall project. You know, and this is me. I have to chime in because, I mean, I'm super proud of Chris and everybody that stepped up. But I had done a live video on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And the motor was not in this motorcycle. So not only was the motor, did we not have the motor, we didn't even have a wiring harness. So the <laughs> fact that they they got it wired and they got the motor in and... And it was just that close that it came down to a crappy ass battery. I mean, I was just, I was so proud of them and everything that they accomplished that I know, um, Chris will tell you he didn't feel defeated, but I know he did. Um, oh, yeah. and he just, How do you he know? should be so I proud mean, of himself. Listen, here's the thing anybody that's built more than one motorcycle ever knows that, like, startup, first startup never goes right. When I first finished my 49 panhead chopper, I kicked that thing for three hours. I took coffee yeah. breaks in the middle of kicking it to get Doesn't it started suck. the first time. Uh, it was a total pain worst. in the ass. And every it's bike I've ever built has been like that. I've never just fired one straight up on first start. Yeah. No, and in all honesty, if you had fired that sucker straight up, it would have been like, that's that's bull. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. bullet that's... stage. This was real deal. They had just put the motor in, just nope. wired it. I mean, there was no way that... And man, that's it was that's scripted. the cat we got to give credit to. Matt Real sat from the time we got there Friday morning. He sat down at a table with the stock harness from my 2003 Ultra and unwired that thing, testing everything, seeing what he needed, what he didn't, going through books and manuals. And he sat there around the clock until 10 minutes before we went to fire that thing up. He got his last wires done, and they loaded the base map into the fuel injection management. He was, he was beyond frazzled. You know what I mean? Because the whole time we're like, "Hey Matt, how's that wiring harness coming, buddy?" And he was like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> "So, but mad props to to the people at IMS too, because you know they let us stay. Yeah, they they do. were the only people in this massive convention center, aside from security, that thought we were just." crazy Bachelor so we were staying there you yeah. know until midnight one o'clock and like they were great because the poor security people were like trying to take us around and find where we could get water and snacks and you know get something into these guys as they're working you know 20 hours that day trying to get this bike together yeah. so to the people at the walter e washington convention center thank you yeah they really IMS, took care thank of us. you really grady pfeiffer thank you 
Yeah, and Grady, I mean, Grady was Grady was the greatest, man. You know, when we started this project, he he couldn't do enough. You know, he got us hooked up with the BDL belt drive. He got us hooked up with the beautiful J-brake in the back. I mean, George from Chaos Cycle came in and gave us the education on using the GSXR front end. You know, Danny from Zippers, Jesus God, he built us a beautiful, beautiful motor. Yeah, thanks, Danny. It's 145 horsepower. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted. We're going Ten. to Marville, baby. That's what's up. <laughs> Holy shit. Right? Right? <laughs> Whoa. We went in and said, can you just freshen it up a little bit? Just freshen it up. 145 horsepower. And Please. Dude, here's, here's the crazy thing. Thank God that it only had 4.9 volts and that thing didn't fire up on that stage because just the compression that was coming through the compression releases was blowing my hair back. You could feel that thing thumping in your chest just trying to start. Like... It's going to be disgusting. It's going to be the fastest motorcycle we've ever had. Oh, my Great. God. Great. That's exactly yeah. what we need. Life insurance, so going, here we you come. You guys are going for the two-up record? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I want to. I want to, but she won't be my co-pilot. Well, Ken, you can ride, bitch. Oh. <laughs> That's controversial. Nope. nope. And on no. 10 levels. Hey, just but, the two of you together. No. That would be a record right there. I am looking for no, a sponsor to, to, to make a set of fat guy leathers. So <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I'm looking for a tank pillow that has a recess. <laughs> In opposition, you know. Well, whatever. It is what it is. But it's a beautiful day in motorcycles, man. I mean, the truth right. is... We have a killer bike. This was a fantastic experience. And the IMS shows overall, like, just to get to see that many different people, different, I mean, across the country, we got to interact with guys from the community garages and different builders. And, you know, it was it was fantastic. I'm, I'm not sure how anybody on the retail end of things felt about the IMS shows, but for us, it was it was a fantastic experience. And we're so glad that we got to be part of it this year. Nice. That's great. Absolutely. Although the worst part was right. Pat Jansen. What do we got? Anything left on social media? Anybody yeah, out Pat's there? here. Pat Jansen is. Pat Jansen's here. That's what's up. I was talking about your mouth hole, Pat. All right, so this is it. We're uh, pulling this bitch into the station. <laughs> what is he doing? He's giving. He's giving the wrap it up sign. So we're pulling this bitch into the station. Um, uh, until we come back times. next Tuesday, probably at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Chris on the East Coast. And I'm Ken. And.